Hello, friends. Welcome to Heidi's Colorful Colorado. I'm your host, Heidi Ganahl, a wife, mom of four, CU Regent, and the founder of Camp Bow Wow and The She Factor. With a passion for keeping the spirit of our state alive and well, I started this podcast to bring the people of Colorado together to celebrate the amazing state we call home. Come along on this journey with me as I travel across our old country roads in my vintage RV, interviewing folks that embody the true spirit of the Rocky Mountains. From the Front Range to the Mile High City to the Wild West of Southern Colorado, we'll celebrate the history, beauty, and Coloradans that make this place the colorful state it is. Each week, you'll meet people trailblazing the way for an even more colorful future for us all, making a huge difference along the way. Are you ready for a Rocky Mountain ride? Let's do this, Colorado. Hello, welcome to Heidi's Colorful Colorado. I have a wonderful guest today, Barbara Bauer of Boardbound, and we're going to talk about what's really holding women back from being in board positions, what's working, what's not, and where things stand in Colorado. Welcome, Barbara. Thank you, Heidi. So happy to have you here, and it's a topic near and dear to my heart. Um, I think you probably know I have a company, She Factor, that helps young women launch their lives. And one of the most astounding stats that we found at She Factor was that young women in their 20s only stay at their companies for an average of 18 months right now. Mm -hmm. And I think that speaks to the difficulty in keeping them engaged on their career path so that they can be on a board eventually or in the C-suite. So talk to us a little bit about that and the journey that you see women taking to become a board member. You know, I think it it has not been talked about as a career path at all until probably (laughs) the last few years. So whether you're in a college program or in the work, there's very little resources that are available to you, particularly in the early stages of your career, to learn about board service. And so Boardbound is a nonprofit organization in Colorado. We're focused on Colorado women and helping them get on boards. And we have two programs, one called Community Boardbound, which is really for women who are earlier in their careers, who want to learn about board governance and then get on a nonprofit board, which is typically the place where you start. Mm -hmm. We have another program, Corporate Boardbound, which is for women who are as sophisticated as you are, <laughs> Those uh, days. <laughs> further along in their career, and uh, typically have had significant leadership roles mm-hmm. in executive roles in companies. And in between, we are now just beginning to try and figure out how to address the total path that women need to take from that first nonprofit board through perhaps larger nonprofits, academic boards, medical boards, which typically are nonprofits, but they're as complicated as Fortune 500 companies. Sure. And then make their progress into private company boards or publicly traded boards. Okay, so this is fantastic um, to talk about this because we don't talk about it enough. And we don't talk about the impact that women have on companies when you do make sure that they have women on their boards. So talk a little bit about that. The good news is there's a lot of research now about women in executive leadership roles, whether it's in the company management or on boards. And particularly for boards, when you have a diverse board, Mm It shows that if you have at least three women on that board, your financial results, return on investment, shareholder prices increase. (laughs) And if you have no diversity, your returns are below average. Interesting. So it's good for the investors. It's it's good for everybody because there are results other than financial. So companies experience fewer financial restatements, uh, there's increased investor interest in the company. And today, probably maybe 80 to 90% of a company's value is intangible. It's not bricks and mortar anymore. It's their brand, it's their customer loyalty. If you have board diversity, you can improve that. If you lack board diversity, as we've seen in notable cases, The CEO gets fired because of inappropriate behavior and the stock tanks and there's bankruptcy, et cetera. 
So people lose their jobs. People yeah. lose their jobs. So board diversity is good for everyone. Okay, so tell us how you ended up doing this. Like, wh what's your passion? <laughs> what was your path to do this? Um, my path has been a circuitous one. So for a number of years, I was an executive doing large-scale software development. And then for the last probably 15 years, I've been working with women entrepreneurs, uh, both here in Colorado. And then I, I worked, uh, I lived in Myanmar for four years to support impact investing for women and young adults. When I came back from Myanmar, I started working for Rockies Venture Club and wanted to increase the number of women we have who get actively involved in early stage companies. But I was also asked to be on the board of Board Bound by the Women's Leadership Foundation. And so I was on the board for several years and then we created the executive director position and I'm so bossy, I thought that was a better fit. <laughs> That's funny. And we talk a lot about the word bossy with young women. Oh, I love it. I know. And it has a negative connotation to some, but really it's all about strong leadership and stepping into your kind of your power and understanding how, you know, confident it takes, what confidence it takes to be a leader in a company or a nonprofit right now. What advice do you give young women that want to move up the corporate ladder or start their own business? Or is there any tidbits that you have that you use quite often? You know, I think young women today are so creative that I hesitate to <laughs> offer any advice, but I do want to talk about this word bossy because it does frequently have a negative con connotation. I think every person, man or woman, needs to learn their style mm -hmm. and figure out what kind of bossy works well for them. <laughs> and when they apply it correctly or inappropriately, learn from that and keep improving. You know, we were chatting before we started taping about this colleague of mine in Vietnam that really taught me about how to operate in situations where directly confronting an issue was just not acceptable mm -hmm. culturally. She was very persistent, never confrontative, but she just would marinate her colleagues over and over again about her good ideas, listen to them and go back time and time again. And she was successful. And when I worked with her, I believe I learned far more from watching her succeed at that than she could ever have learned from me. I love that word marinate, like <laughs> marinate on ideas and, yeah. help, and help your colleagues marinate on your own ideas and your, you know, vision for how to get to success. Right. Okay. So Colorado, where do we stand with the stats on board members? Well, the good news is Colorado has made great progress over the last, say, five to 10 years. Um, Earlier, we were probably almost at the bottom end of Colorado states that had uh, Fortune 500 headquarters mm -hmm. companies or publicly traded headquarters companies. Today, as of the end of 2020, we are on average. Mm -hmm. So in Colorado now, 21% of the publicly traded company board seats are held by women. Okay. But we're maybe the 16th out of all of those states. I think uh, Minnesota may be first. And, you know, as someone who loves Colorado mm -hmm. and believes that we are leaders in everything we want to be, we've got to be a leader in this too. Boy, do I agree with you. We've got to lead on this effort in Colorado. And those of us that are on the front lines in the entrepreneur space or the corporate space see such a need to bring women up the ranks and help um, build the momentum to have more women on boards. How do we do that? And how does your program help do that? Well, there's three sides that are important here. One is the supply side. And I talked about corporate board bound programs, community board bound. That prepares women and helps them understand what they need to do to expand their networks to really become visible to the networks that actually put people on boards. Yes. There's the, the supply side or the, the CEO side, mm -hmm. 
We have a program called Board Connect where we encourage CEOs and board chairs or chairs of NOM and Gov committees to talk to us about their board openings. Uh -huh. We provide a slate of women candidates mm -hmm. from Colorado or from across the United States because we have partners across the United States. And through Board Connect, we begin to see that CEOs who are receiving a lot of investor pressure, mm -hmm. that they are willing to look at diverse candidates. And of course, because of all the recent um, work that's being done and visibility, we're really working hard to support women of color mm -hmm. uh, on these board positions too. Yeah, you know, I, I tell young people when I speak to them, specifically young women, that it's never been a better time to be a woman uh, in the history of man, <laughs> but it's also paralyzing in some ways. There's so many opportunities and so many choices. And of course, we still have our difficulties and things yeah. we have to navigate. But, um, you know, there's the gig economy, there's corporate positions, there's starting your own business, there's working in nonprofits. Mm -hmm. So what do you what's your sense of where young women are at right now do they feel better about how things are going or do they feel discouraged i think young women actually are optimistic Good. or maybe those are the only ones i'm talking to <laughs> <laughs> but you know they're typically well educated uh full of initiative and have had lots of opportunities, whether through team sports or school programs or whatever, to actually have a better appreciation what the opportunities are than I did, certainly a thousand years ago. <laughs> sure. And and so I think they're generally optimistic. I you know when you talked about the sort of short tenure that we see uh, with young women, I think in general we're becoming a more uh, mobile and impatient workforce. Mm -hmm. And because there are options, nobody anymore is thinking about a 50 year career with a watch at the end of your career. Sure. So I think, you know, all of us are moving more frequently mm -hmm. and trying to always find the next opportunity that will improve your skills or make you feel more satisfied in your job. Yeah. Uh, uh, Heidi, one other thing I wanted to add. Yesterday evening, we had an event for CEOs mm -hmm. and board chairs, and it was really interesting. I think we had 36 or 37 CEOs and board chairs from Colorado, and we wanted to talk to them about what they did to accomplish diversity on their boards. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they really talked about is that they are all beginning to rethink the criteria that they have used to select people for their board. It always used to be you went to the same college with this fellow. Uh, now it's what is it that we really need? Do we need the marketing skills? So they're not as rigid and narrow as they used to be. Mm -hmm. Their networks, however, we think are still rigid and narrow. And <laughs> yeah. So that's the job we're trying to do. Well, and one of the things, I went through a similar program a while back with Deloitte, and one of the things that was um, just shocking to me is that they typically don't consider women for boards unless you've been a C-level position. Mm -hmm. So a CEO, COO, CFO, how many women are at the C-suite these days? I mean, that's a whole nother issue. So if that's the criteria, you've just blocked out a huge number of women that are in the VP slats or you know, executive directors. Right, and, and certainly in lots of companies, if, if you're head of a business unit in that company, you may well have a P&L responsibility that is just as complicated and impressive as someone who's been CEO in another mm -hmm. company. Uh, and that's exactly the kind of rigidity that I think is beginning to change. Good. Yes. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Um, one of the things we were talking about before we taped also is our love for Colorado. Mm -hmm. And that's really what the essence of what we're doing with this podcast. So talk to me a little bit about why you love it here and what you think is the essence of Colorado or the spirit of, of our great state. Well, I moved to Colorado in 1986 and I had been living on the East Coast and in New Jersey, it's gray a lot of the time, particularly <laughs> through the winter. And I thought I was depressed all the time. So I decided to move to Colorado because 
our weather is the best on the planet. That's a very common theme we're hearing in the different podcasts. Yes. <laughs> and, and, you know, life here is uh, outdoors. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've, I've lived now since 1986. I've been away from Colorado to do the startup in the Bay Area, to live for several years in Southeast Asia. But I have always kept a small apartment here because I never want to not be a Colorado resident. Oh, that's great. Yeah. What um, What's your favorite Colorado thing to do or what's the most Colorado thing you've done? You know, I, if I think about the most Colorado thing, there was one summer on the 4th of July, I had a place up in the mountains in Silverthorne And I got up in the morning and I hiked Buffalo Mountain because that's what you do on the 4th of July. (laughs) I came back, had breakfast. Then I did a bike ride over Vail Pass and back. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wait, it gets better. (laughs) And then in the afternoon, I went for a kayak in Dillon Lake. Then I decided to just take it easy and I went for a swim at the Silverthorne Rec Center. And where else can you do that? That's amazing. I think that's um, one of the top answers we've heard. (laughs) You covered the gamut there. You know, Colorado just is the place where you can get outdoors and appreciate why we're on this planet. I agree. Yeah, I agree. It's beautiful. And the people are beautiful. People are wonderful. Yeah, and I I love the independence. Yes, I agree. There's like this rugged individualism Mm -hmm. to the people who move here, to love living here. And I hope we can preserve that. Yeah. And I think one of the ways we can do that is helping really cool individuals get board spots in our companies in Colorado. So how do people get in touch with you if they're interested in finding out more about your program? Well, it's easy to contact me through Barbara at womensleadershipfoundation.org. Okay. Or we have a website uh, and you can find us at womensleadershipfoundation.org. Okay. Or Google Boardbound. Okay. And you'll find us. That's fantastic. Well, I encourage women across the state to reach out to Barbara and get more engaged, aim high, reach for those mountaintops to be on the board at a company, whether it's public or private or nonprofit. It's been a fantastic experience for me being a regent at the University of Colorado and being on that board. And, you know, it's a, it's a way we can make a difference and leave our mark on the state of Colorado, right? We can make Colorado more successful because the financial results are real mm-hmm. and the quality of life improves when you have board diversity and diversity in anything. I agree. Couldn't agree more. Well, thank you so much, Barbara, for oh, spending hi, time I'm with us. So glad and honored. Thank you. Oh, ditto. Thanks for all the work you do. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us today on Heidi's Colorful Colorado. If you enjoyed this conversation, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. And definitely follow me on Instagram to keep up with my latest adventures. In the meantime, happy trails from me, Heidi Ganahl.